Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and welcome back to the ATH Materia Medica series. Today I'll be talking about Pulsatilla, the windflower. It's amazing how this delicate little purple flower can be such an amazing healing agent in so many different situations. Much can be said about Pulsatilla, but I'll continue to try my best to condense the information in these videos so that they don't run too long. So let's jump right in. Let's begin with the Pulsatilla psychological profile. If Nux is the remedy that represents the archetypal masculine, then it's fair to say that Pulsatilla represents the archetype of femininity. The Pulsatilla type is soft, sweet, and feminine. She is gentle and mild and kind and loving. Although sometimes shy or timid, she is nevertheless emotionally open. She willingly shares her feelings in a way that tends to draw out the sympathies of others. In fact, she seeks attention and sympathy from others. She desires consolation and wants to be reassured and comforted. Pulsatilla seeks both emotional support and physical attention. We can spot the little Pulsatilla girl because she likes to wear dresses and she clings to her mother. She wants to sit in mom's lap and to be carried around. And the Pulsatilla adult loves to receive hugs. Her demeanor can sometimes come across as naive or childlike. She is openly affectionate and loves to give hugs as much as she likes to get hugs. She craves love and attention. Another key characteristic of Pulsatilla is that she is prone to changeable states of emotion. She may be happy one moment, sad and weepy the next, and irritable the next. As we shall see, this changeability is a theme that runs throughout Pulsatilla symptomatology. Now, Pulsatilla is also famously agreeable. She tends to go along with what others want. Like a flower, she drifts wherever the wind blows her. She's a follower. Because she is a people pleaser, she often yields to the opinions, beliefs, and desires of those around her. As such, she can be submissive and acquiescent. She accepts others as they are in a kind, sympathetic, loving manner. This trait can be so strong that she can wind up not knowing what it is that she really wants. She doesn't have strong opinions or strong beliefs. This makes her indecisive because she doesn't really know what she herself thinks. Instead, she looks to others for guidance and reinsurance when it comes to making decisions. Of course, the downside of this is that she can be taken advantage of quite easily. She is easily swayed and influenced and may become overly dependent upon others. Knowing all this, it's easy to see why Pulsatilla has a need for company. She's not inclined to live alone. In fact, this need for companionship makes it likely that when she experiences a romantic breakup, she will quickly jump into another relationship. Of course, she often does this for the wrong reason which is to avoid being alone. On the positive side, pulsatilla types are natural born nurturers. Pulsatilla has a highly developed mothering instinct. She lives for family and she lives for her children. Perhaps one of the worst fates for a pulsatilla woman is to be unable to bear children. Another keynote clue is that Pulsatilla tends to weep easily. This shouldn't be confused with the dramatic hysterical cries of Ignatia. Pulsatilla is teary. She weeps gently and softly, drawing out the sympathy of those around her. She cries at the drop of a hat, especially when talking about her problems. When Pulsatilla presents with depression, she may refer to it as sadness. She tends to project an 
I'm sad, woe is me, please help me type of feeling. The source of her sadness and depression can often be tracked to a feeling of having been abandoned. She experiences loss as being forsaken, as being left alone and unloved. Pulsatilla is listed prominently in repertories under forsaken feeling and delusion she is alone. It makes sense, therefore, that one of Pulsatilla's biggest fears is the fear of being alone. She desires company, craves sympathy, and fears being left alone. The Pulsatilla child doesn't venture too far off on her own. She stays nearby, close to her parents. Additional Pulsatilla fears include fear of heights, fear of the dark, fear of crowds, and claustrophobia. Now, with all that said, in some cases, Pulsatilla can become rigid or dogmatic. In such cases, although she may come across as sure and certain, deep down she still doesn't know what she really believes. That apparent certainty turns out to be a subconscious coping mechanism, one that compensates for her underlying lack of conviction. She desperately clings to a person or an idea or a belief system that she thinks will give her the answers that she needs. This can sometimes take the form of rigid political or religious beliefs. She may even embrace religious fundamentalism. And finally, it's worth noting that just like with Nux, which can be helpful for women's health problems, Pulsatilla can also be of great help in men's health problems. I have successfully prescribed it in many times for men, both acutely and constitutionally. When we see a gentle, easygoing man who has a strong attachment to his family, and especially to his children, we must think of Pulsatilla. Okay, now let's talk about the Pulsatilla generals. In terms of physical appearance, many Pulsatilla constitutional types have blonde hair, blue eyes, and a shapely feminine figure. Now, not all people who need pulsatilla look like this, but when we encounter these physical features, we should think of pulsatilla. Now, generally speaking, pulsatilla is warm-blooded and is bothered by too much heat. She does not like to sleep in a warm room. She tends to keep her feet uncovered in bed and may sleep on her back. Pulsatilla is usually an outdoor person. She loves fresh open air and feels better outside in the cool air. She often prefers to keep the windows open. An important generality is that Pulsatilla's symptoms are notoriously changeable. As noted previously, this applies to her emotional states, but it's also characteristic of her physical symptoms too. If you find yourself confused because there's no clear symptom pattern, it's possible that the pattern being expressed is one of changeability. In terms of food interests, Pulsatilla is famous for its love of creamy foods. She gravitates towards things like peanut butter, mac and cheese, butter, ice cream, cheesecake, cheese, creamy soups, and creamy sauces. Although she likes these kind of foods, they often disagree with her and can upset her digestion. In fact, she can be averse to or aggravated from the same rich, creamy, fatty foods that she loves and craves. She has a similar relationship to eggs, which she may desire or be averse to or which may aggravate her symptoms. Pulsatilla prefers cold foods and may dislike warm foods or warm drinks. And last but not least, Pulsatilla is famous for its lack of thirst. 
she tends to be thirstless. And this often becomes clear, especially during acute illnesses, like during a fever, for example, where you would expect her to be thirsty, but she isn't. But she may lack thirst even when she's not sick. In order to ascertain whether a patient is thirstless, I will often ask if she needs to remind herself to drink fluids. Many pulsatilla patients will admit to this telltale keynote clue. All right, now let's talk about some of pulsatilla's physical health problems. Pulsatilla being the feminine remedy that it is, is well suited to a variety of women's health issues. It can be useful for the entire range of menstrual irregularities, including painful menses, absence of menses, suppressed menses, and of course, the telltale irregular changeable menstrual cycles. One specific clue is that pulsatilla is indicated for headaches that occur at the close of the menses when the flow stops. It's a commonly indicated remedy for leucorrhea, which is medical lingo for a vaginal discharge. The leucorrhea may be chronic or it may be a sign of infection. The discharge is often bland and changeable in quality, sometimes yellow, sometimes green, and so on. Of course, pulsatilla is an important remedy for problems during pregnancy. There may be incontinence of urine during pregnancy. And pulsatilla is famously indicated for malposition of the fetus near the end of pregnancy. It's been known to save the day in breech presentations when labor is approaching. Occasionally, I've met women who claim that they feel better when pregnant and that their symptoms improve dramatically during pregnancy. I've had more than one person tell me I felt the best I ever felt in my life during my pregnancies. In such cases, pulsatilla is surely the remedy of choice. And finally, pulsatilla is a remedy for menopausal problems and hot flashes. Whenever we see the corresponding mentals and generals associated with these female health conditions, we must think of pulsatilla. Now, pulsatilla also tends to be helpful for a variety of digestive problems. And in most cases, those problems are aggravated by eating rich fatty foods, whether it's heartburn, indigestion, or diarrhea, they are likely to be aggravated by rich foods, especially ice cream. I recall a case of an adult male who was having painful gallbladder attacks. After discovering that he was also craving peanut butter at the same time, I prescribed a few doses of pulsatilla, which brought his attacks to an abrupt end. Nausea is another important clue that often points to pulsatilla, especially when we see nausea from rich food or nausea during pregnancy. Of course, there are many remedies that fit nausea, but there are three constitutional remedies that commonly have nausea as a prominent feature. They are pulsatilla, sepia, and nux vomica. When we see nausea in the context of female hormonal problems, we think pulsatilla or sepia. When nausea accompanies chronic digestive problems, we think pulsatilla or nux. Now let's review the modalities associated with pulsatilla. Generally speaking, we have aggravation from heat and amelioration from cold. Pulsatilla is aggravated by too much warmth. She dislikes a warm, stuffy room with no circulating air. And she can be aggravated by the heat of the sun. Conversely, pulsatilla feels better in cold air or cool air. Fresh, cool, open air ameliorates her symptoms. Even if she happens to be chilly, she may still prefer the open air. She likes to walk slowly outside in the fresh air. 
And this illustrates another modality, which is that she feels better from slow, gentle motion. She also prefers cold applications, which may bring relief, for example, to arthritic pains. Remember the changeable nature of Pulsatilla's symptoms. When we see wandering arthritis that moves from location to location and that feels worse from heat and better from walking slowly and better from cold applications, we think of Pulsatilla. As we've already seen, Pulsatilla is aggravated by rich fatty foods. And lastly, Pulsatilla's problems can be aggravated by any hormonal event or hormonal change, such as at puberty, around the menses, during pregnancy, at menopause, and from birth control pills. Now let's talk about Pulsatilla for acute ailments. I can't emphasize enough how commonly indicated this remedy is for a wide variety of acute conditions. Pulsatilla has been successfully used to treat the common cold, ear infections, coughs, and other respiratory infections. It's invaluable in the treatment of measles, chickenpox, and mumps, and it can be useful in genitourinary problems such as bladder infections, vaginitis, orchitis, prostatitis, and epididymitis. In fact, it's almost as specific for a particular sequela of mumps that metastasizes to the testicles, resulting in orchitis. It can be helpful in cases of conjunctivitis and even for styes, especially when the styes are located on the upper eyelids. The classic Pulsatilla cough is one that is dry in the evening, loose in the morning, and forces the patient to sit up because it's worse when lying in bed at night. When any of these conditions are accompanied by keynote clues associated with this remedy, such as thirstlessness, warm bloodedness, amelioration from open air, changeable symptoms, and a desire for company and sympathy, then we must consider Pulsatilla. Let's finish now with remedy relationships. Pulsatilla is known to have a complementary relationship to silica. And when we're thinking about Pulsatilla, we must compare it to similar remedies, such as Kaley Sulf, which is known as the irritable Pulsatilla, and which has a number of similar characteristics. It's also important to compare pulsatilla to sepia because both have a broad impact upon the female hormonal system. Okay, that's it for pulsatilla. I hope this gives you a nice overview of another very important and commonly indicated polycrest. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you again on the next episode of All Things Homeopathy. May the vital force be with you.